Bada bing, bada boom. Welcome to Cinematographer, logically speaking. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen, for the song. Uh, here we are. Today we're talking about a short film about love from Kislowski. Uh, also a little bit about its uh, its uh, its twin, its shorter twin, Decalogue Six. Cool. Uh, I think that's about it. And it's time to get rocking and rolling. Uh, so I really like this film. This yeah, I get. <laughs> this was my, this was my second time seeing it. I liked it way more this time. That is for sure. Um, yeah, it just brings a ton of stuff to mind. It's also like really nice. Kislowski, um, Tanner, and I are big fans this fool he's made so much super good material the whole decalogue is insanely good um it's almost unfortunate we didn't just watch the whole decalogue because it's it's kind of just a really really great thing but i i really liked it uh <clears throat> i thought this one was all right i've seen several kislowski's at this point i'm also a fan Boy, does this guy like his music. Wait, what have you seen? I've seen... He did a Tre Cola or whatever, Three Colors, right? Mm-hmm. I've seen Blue. I've seen Decalogue, one of the Decalogues, um, and now this one. And maybe something else, but I can't remember. What was the Decalogue about? The, other, the previous Decalogue was about uh, a mother and father's relationship. Oh. Which, which number was that? A mother... A mother, oh, sorry, not mother. Oh, a, daughter. A, a daughter, daughter, father. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Four. That was so good. I forget. Which one? Which number is that? Four. Four. So, Pretty yeah. sure. Pro- probably saw number four. That was crazy. This one so far, though, is probably my least enjoyed experience, but uh, there's still something here that uh, makes me find the movie to be good, <clears throat> even though I didn't enjoy it too much. Uh, yeah. I agree kind of with both of you. The first time I watched this, I was not too into it. (laughs) But the more I watch it, the more I like it. Um, And specifically on... All right. uh, I believe you're cutting out. Is it only for me or for everybody? Yeah, I think your filter might be too high. It's probably fine on the recording, but... Yeah, filter too high. Sorry, folks. We're having... Hello? Hello? Yeah, that's good. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be great content. Sorry, folks. Uh, yeah. The, I'll just say one 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 thing that I noticed this time was. Uh, no. Am I oh, doing no. it again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Yeah. You're also just kind of quiet in general. I feel like you need to talk closer to the mic or Dude, something. Dude, I'm right next to it. Yeah. <laughs> I turn it up or something. I'm volume. No, I'm fine with volume. It's just it's just this cutting out going on. Oh no. To me, it's quiet too. This is the better okay. podcast. Do, do you have a max out on volume? I've got them yeah. like 150. I got them almost. <laughs> oh What's your decibel readout? Niner, niner. <laughs> All right, Brody, go. Oh, um, we'll come back man, to you. Let me try to figure this out. Okay, maybe you could. Maybe we could loop back. Um, so hot take. Um, this, I really enjoyed my experience watching the film. That being said, there was a level of suspension of disbelief um, towards a section of that film, towards the bulk of it, uh, that I found rather unbelievable. Um, That sort of took me out of the the film a little bit. Um, And it almost seemed like it was playing more towards like a fantasy or how things, how he wished it would happen, aside from the ending, of course um more than how things would actually go and i know like you know you're supposed to sort of play along a little bit but i just couldn't stop thinking about it cringe yeah i knew i knew you wouldn't be on my side i knew i'd be public enemy number one this episode that that's only evidenced by you you foresaw just how bad your take is right well, 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 it's like that Rick and Morty meme 
where the, it's like the pickle with all the guns around him. <laughs> yeah. Man. I'm the smart yeah. one, but yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody's everybody's around me threatening me. Yeah. All right, Tony, you want to try again? Let's try this again. All right. Uh, I don't even know what I was saying before, but something that stood out to me this time was uh, the way I almost like involuntarily sympathize with each character. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's multiple moments, usually during the close up shots, where I feel like any notion or opinion I have due to the circumstances of the plot like don't matter i only it's like an unconditional acceptance of each character's behavior Mm -hmm. notice it particularly last time i watched it yeah i uh, i agree with that for sure um and maybe that's sort of related enough to brody's uh quote-unquote hot take (laughs) that we could i could we could talk about maybe both of those i mean i i i find them both yeah super sympathetic and really um yeah like i i i feel bad i pity both of them but i think uh i don't know the boy initially i think has a lot more positive qualities that i enjoy and i think he i find him more relatable for sure that's because you're a boy it's because i'm a boy and i sit in my room and watch things yeah um and uh yeah, I mean, I suppose that's good enough for me. Um, I, I, yeah, in terms of Brody's hot take, I think it's just ridiculous. Um, like you're, you, you want to, you want to maybe flesh it out a little more. Yeah. So the this is what I was thinking was that in a scenario where you reveal yourself to be have watching this woman know through your window for like a long time to me in my head like i was thinking like oh here it goes like that's restraining order like something's about to happen like so there's gonna be some sort of shift it wasn't supposed to like she wasn't supposed to like come on to him or like let it happen or anything like that like to me that's like that's it i and there's there's like to me there's no world where a woman would actually uh, sort of let that happen or or um, sort of like give in to this idea. And, like, and I get like that she's like sort of like maybe been taken advantage of like sexually and you know she's like in the pursuit of like pure love or something like that but I just don't care. Like it, it, to me it's... Yeah no I think uh, I think your claim though only works if you're imagining she is the average woman because you're right that like there's no there is no there are very few women that would allow something like this to happen but you can imagine such a tragic woman to like that does fall in love with her stalker slash like like that would like you know some sort of uh dynamic emerges between her when she realizes that she's being watched i can totally imagine some relatively frazzled traumatized person falling into that couldn't you yeah and so um, just observe this no. as a part of a particular instance of that yeah it's just an uh, instance i also want to add real quick that i think yeah if you talk about just in terms of like oh woman falls in love with her or woman uh gives a chance to her stalker right like that just like that plot line summation supposes the average normal woman or something and the average normal stalker but it's this woman and it's this boy i mean i think part of what makes it work in my mind is he is so notably disarming he is so obviously non-threatening he is so obviously childlike he is not the image of the stalker he is a young boy super boyish and 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 clearly just clearly non-threatening such that she is always in control of the situation i mean every in every single interaction they have except for maybe towards the end she has complete control over him, right? He, 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 he is summoned. She, you know, he is just totally at her mercy. And I think that's why it makes more sense. If he were like a force of his own, you know, it would be scary and unrealistic. I think you'd be like, oh, this, this chick's an idiot. 
but he is so docile. Yeah, I think the ultimate like disarming moment was when he walks away after the initial confrontation. <laughs> and he walks away like so dejectedly. I actually don't like and that. She, yeah. And she and she realizes that she like this this kid is like this is a weak kid, you know, or something like that, or like he's actually harmless is what I thought it conveyed. I thought that scene, just as a quick note, was a little over the top. The way he walks away, like such because he slumps against yeah, the, he slumps against the wall. That's the part that gets yeah, bad. he yeah. slumps against the wall, head down, walks real slowly, like a little pouty baby. You know, I thought it was too much. Like he could have just walked away. I think away. that's okay. No, I don't. Think I think it's fine. Much. I think it's a I think little it hammered too home much. the idea. I think it hammered home the idea a little too much. The nail was already in. Same with when he <laughs> punches the wall or the dresser. Oh, well, that I just am not sure about. No, that's a little too much. But what is it? <laughs> too much what? No, it's too much in a different way. I, like, I almost found it kind of funny, and I think I wasn't supposed to find it funny, but it it was like he's giggling at her sexual uh, encounter. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of just, I don't know. Like, I f- my, my feelings towards it seemed uh, not right. I will say there were, there were times where I had a, a similar view as Brody where I was like a kind of uh, I don't know like uh, taken out of the narrative for a moment but uh, you know I found myself re-immersed in like a couple minutes mostly because of that like over the top moment that you point out Troy I don't I didn't see it as over the top I thought that it delivered the I thought it it accurately uh gave an account or it appropriately gave an account for why she would not see him as harmful and so from now on i could understand how she interacts with him as if he were like a deer watching her or something like that you know i don't know yeah i mean brody imagine i would do the same thing were it were it the case i mean uh, this is just maybe a stretch if i imagine like a a very young girl doing this to me but imagine like a literal like a nine-year-old or a ten-year-old is like, oh, I've, I've, I've been watching you. You know, forget all the sexual connotation. Like, oh, I, I, I've know, been, I know. I've been watching you. What? Well, I, yeah, I, I watch you. Uh, I live across from you. I, I watch you, like, all the time for, like, a year. You'd be, like, mad. But, like, if they're, like, a ten-year-old and they, like, clearly don't even understand what they're doing themselves. Like, they have no ill will. They, they're not dangerous. They're not a threat. You might be like, well, what do you know? Like, what? And, like, you'd get this insane or and assuming like i'm just you know like this kid you so get crazy not, honest no, so in this in this is fine in this scenario is fine but the problem for me is that there is this sexual nature to it yeah i know but i'm but i'm saying to, it's not i i said forget the sexual nature get it, you know like, well but i'm saying you can't forget that because that's not part of the film all right fine and to Leave me, in when, the- when you add in the sexual nature to it it catapults into the realm of like this male like like this fantasy that is like being constructed, like how things would like to have happened had that been, you know, me writing it or something. I think you got two different things. Wait, forget the analogy, right? Yeah, leaving the sexual nature. I think I don't. I I I almost don't even get it. He's so obviously non-threatening. He's so docile, and she remains in control at all times, from the very very start before she even decides to like give him a chance. Yeah. So I don't get what you're like. Why? Why wouldn't she take an interest in the totally safe, non-threatening person who has been studying her for a year? And also, it sounds like you have a separate argument that the plot of the film plays like some male fantasy. Well, that's well. I'm saying it is unrealistic. Like, I, to me, those go. They're not separate at all. Like, they're unrealistic because it's trying to like play out like a fantasy of like how it would like to have happened but what's that fantasy um, uh doesn't seem fantastical at all i think there's fantasy in the viewership i don't think there's fantasy in the way they come together it seems like a obviously a train wreck um yeah it is obviously a train wreck like at no point is it going i'm gonna and he's yeah he always see, has this look like he's in hell yeah every moment he's with her he's like like and it's not like this like euphoric like oh yes yeah. i'm with her finally it's just like this hell ride the whole time yeah he has one moment of euphoria when he asks her to ice cream yeah. and she says yes yeah right i feel the typical male fantasy i feel like i, feel like I could i could flesh out the idea better but 
not right now because uh, yeah i just can't do i just can't do it right now that's all okay this is a voiceover edit um i'm recording this two weeks after the podcast brody never fleshed it out and so <laughs> he actually has been utterly blown out right now okay end of voiceover <laughs> dude that reminds me their voices what the hell what? that dude's voice tom could or tom x voice it's so like deep oh, it's so awesome and, on the and phone. Synthetic. It's like what the hell, you know? Wait, what do you mean? Well, not just then. It's every time he speaks, it sounds kind of synthetic. Like it's like it's very deep for one, and has this slight like uh, I don't know, this slight like modulation to it, like subtle modulation that makes it almost feel like he's got a slight little like voice that box, uh-huh. just a tiny one, just so. You made him sound fucking scary and fucking stalkerish. Well, I'm sure. Honestly, I'm sure the audio is all dubbed. Like everything you hear in the film, yeah. As well as, uh, it it is mono audio, so that would just contribute to a condensed sound. For what it's worth. Did you feel this way though? I when you heard him speak. Uh, not really. I didn't feel it was like super out of the ordinary. I thought Told it was. It. I thought it was. Hello. I thought it was very deep, and especially striking on the phone. Like when the whole frame shifts. Like you're listening to him talk, and you're like, okay, it's just a kid with a deep voice. But then when he's like, hello, you know, on the phone, it gets reframed as something a little more scary and menacing, which is like this type of character he wants to play through the phone to her, you know, maybe. But um, I never was like distracted by how his voice sounds. Mm-hmm. Other than, yeah, like everything is du- like all audio. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely stood out to me. Uh, the details of his voice. Look, people love being watched. We all like a girl who says she likes us a little bit more than we'd ever considered before. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how ugly she is. I, mean, I, <laughs> I imagine, I imagine that that is more of a male thing than a female thing. No but way. The pleasure no of way. being watched, es- especially. Uh, no, this is wrong. All right. I mean, whatever. None of us can really know for sure. You know. <laughs> It's all in the mind. It's all in your head. It's all in your head. Well, Wait, what were you going to say? Sorry. Oh, Sorry. Go ahead. Bro, I just wanted, you were saying especially. I was going to say especially for an attractive woman. Yeah, but her relationships are unfulfilling. All right. <laughs> all right, so that's the end of the podcast. <laughs> Listen, I don't know what to get into. I feel like... Um, I, well, I was going just... to add maybe something yeah. um, about being watched. The whole second half of the... Well, maybe like the last third of the film, she's now the watcher of, of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's this reversal. And uh, I don't get the impression that he necessarily likes that. Or like... I don't uh, think he knows. Yeah, maybe. Well, that's the sense I had. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I think I just find it so plausible that there's somebody, you know, uh, especially <clears throat> if they're relatively artistically oriented, you know, and she is an artist, right? Mm-hmm. Or like an aspiring artist, that there's some sort of like desperation to be watched, you know, and an yeah. artist like it's to to be appreciated, and. Uh, and I think, I think, especially as you get older, like an older woman wants her beauty to be appreciated for sure. And that's why they're like, I don't think the, um, the MILF fantasy, for instance, is just a male fantasy. Mm-hmm. I think it is like a dynamic that arises because of two, like, it's a MILF like, fantasy. uh, like, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, so just like the, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Both, both actors enjoy their role in that, mm-hmm. you know, potentially when, you know, when, when they engage in that. And there's like some sort of like desperate clinging to beauty as you get older as a woman in general, I think. Um, and I think that's all fair to say. And so like if you get this like naive young boy who lives near you, who like, you know, seems harmless that you can control. I see it, you know, plausible that, you know, an instance of that occurs. I don't know. Yeah. If an instance where, where she invites it and wants to see what's going on with it, investigates it. Yeah. If, I don't know. If we're still just listing reasons for the plausible realism of this thing mm-hmm. like yeah and she 
the first thing he tells her is that he loves her. And she comments later that that was the first time in an extremely long time that anyone had told her that. So here you've got this like, yeah, she's got these relationships that she can't control and continually go poorly for her. And which she also continue like uh, evidence of that lack of control. She seems to be used by her own admission for sex and things like this. And uh, here's a here's here's a young man who one is very uh, observant of her, and, and there's some kind of flattery there, perchance, but but also mm-hmm. loves her, doesn't want to use her, is very specific in that he wants nothing from her. And finally, she can take the reins of some kind of relationship. And, and do what she wants with it. Um, and then I just wanted to note, uh, this was my flex on Brody moment I was excited to have, but it's going to be a bit lackluster. But Brody, okay. Brody, did you note any um, any particular biblical significance to uh, to any anything here? Because I did. I actually didn't know. My oh. my 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 mind was actually locked. After after I found the Avengers to be more realistic than <laughs> oh dude okay they, uh, <laughs> I get you playing into it but that is legitimately why I'm bothered by this is because I like it feels strange to move forward when you haven't like you don't even like what when I haven't said you're right Go no ahead. no like, not when I'm right <laughs> but it's like okay we say okay so you don't think the film's realistic whatever well, let's just keep talking and it's mm-hmm. like buying into the plausible realism you know taking something as real is like instrumental to taking it seriously and thinking about it and placing yourself in the situation and so like mm-hmm. it, it whatever um tomek is polish for thomas uh i.e the apostle who did not believe in the resurrection of christ until uh he was faced with it you know he he touched the the holes in christ's hand and mm. and the woman's name Magda is Polish shorthand for Magdalene, as in Mary Magdalene. And mm. so they have these separate roles, and of course they end up to occupy each other's roles in the situation, which is somewhat interesting. And then I'll also note, Stephen might know this, Brody. I don't think you do. Um, okay. No, <laughs> no, no, no. no. Okay. This is separate. No, you, come out with, you come out with one take. No, no, no. And no this is separate. This now. is separate. This is this is. Yeah, but that was unnecessary. No, but go no. ahead. No, this is total separate, like literal, just information. Uh, okay. In the Decalogue, right? It's ten one-hour films. In each film, mm. there's an appearance of this character, who, more or less, is God. Uh, and in this film, it is the man when when Tomek is running uh, around with the milk. When Tomek yeah, is running around with the milk. Uh, do you recall the man who looks at him and Tomek says, sorry, and the man looks mm-hmm. at him and gives him kind of a funny like smile. And then mm-hmm. this man reappears after Tomek has been humiliated and he's walking back to his apartment. He, he cross paths with the man and they, they lock eyes and continue to look at each other. But the man stops and Tomek looks away first and the man continues to watch him go up the steps. Anyway, so this guy, I was just noting, uh, is basically God. <laughs> and they ask uh she asked him you know that's a sin yeah he yeah goes, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, I <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah i know <laughs> yeah and sin comes from the bible <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is this the only uh episode in decalogue where where the god figure is uh acknowledged what do you mean acknowledged oh uh, no like he says something to him does he say like all, does he it, speak yeah, doesn't he? Well, he says sorry or something. He says, no, no. Tomek says sorry to God. Yeah. Uh, I don't think God responds. No, no, that's what I mean, though. Like, I don't think in any of the other oh, episodes, no one speaks to him. The characters ever really acknowledge that figure. Yeah, none that I can mm. think of. I mean, there's like an extremely intense moment of eye contact between God and the protagonist in short film about killing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I can't think of any other time where God is spoken to. So that's notable. Yeah, and he says sorry. But his yeah. sorry, right? He's sorry. He's so excited. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. Hey, child, like. Brody, what do you think? Do you think that <sighs> my claim that due to your not basically taking it as plausibly real, you thus there's a there's a yeah there's like a locking out or something there's a you can't take it seriously you don't please yourself and so like the fruit of the film is possibly lost on you 
or uh, like you think is is not worth investigating given the situation is so fantastical um i think in some ways that's true and in some ways it's not um like that could only like uh like be known as this progresses um but like you know if the fruits of the film are like uh how to get a girlfriend 101 then like no but if it's something about like the nature of desire or something like that then yeah uh so it just depends but i'm not locked out completely you're banned i'm seething all right, well, what yeah, order? You're still seething. You're still seething. Yeah, I'm just seething because I don't even feel like it's, whatever. I'm seething. I mean, I just think of uh, Twitch streamers that meet up with mods. Like that <laughs> happens all the time. Like I've heard that story a bunch of times, and they sleep with them, and it's a horrible situation. Or they get like they get in a relationship and then get like abused, or something like that. And or they tell people they get abused. You know, whatever they get abused, and then they. Uh, and then they're out, and I just imagine the Twitch streamer knows that these mods are watching them for their beauty the whole time. It's essentially like an invited voyeurism, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then they, you know, in an act of desperation, they interact with them physically. You know, they meet up, and then things go awry or whatever, and then you hear about it later. So, like, I mean, the aspect that it's invited voyeurism changes it, uh, but you can imagine that just a little bit of desperation and also lack of wide internet access uh might make this whole uh this whole uh you know st stalker situation um much more akin to like the twitch situation given like its setting and and constraints of the times you know yes um however like it's also um uh like given like the whole like phone thing and the calling the um uh like the gas emergency and like the notices like like to me those are like much more like like you're she doesn't know he the did realm. the gas one by the way just saying okay well no, whatever he, no like, she does uh, the gas yeah uh, she brings it up kinda... she brings it up yeah she brings it up yeah so like it to me this like you know like Later he's on, coming know. off as like obviously like so weird and just whack and then also like the fact that like and she sort of like then becomes like fall in love with him like af like I was like I don't know I I I just can't I just want to add I just, um. I, I I mean just imagine I don't know just imagine it's you you get these spooky calls you get this whatever and you discover <laughs> that the person doing it is 16 years old and you know a total docile whatever like those fears transform into something else right it's like the way like you ever get in trouble when you're real little in some or even when you're like a teenager like you get caught doing something bad and some random adult like take takes control of you verbally like come here right now don't run come here and you go do you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah like sure. like this is a type like like this is something that doesn't make sense between adults right like this the the adult in that situation anyway, she just has to i just see the fears as transforming into something totally different when it's revealed to her instantly that not only is this a child but one who is in love with her Okay. I get it's weird, but whatever. Um, I don't know. I mean, like, I don't we're think just we gonna, have, we're I don't, just gonna keep saying it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we have to be like totally stuck on this. I I did say this initially to be uh, inflammatory, um, but not for forty minutes. Whatever. Oh, also, maybe something we could actually talk about. You say that she falls in love with him, and I'm not so sure. Okay. Throughout the film, I'm constantly thinking about where is the love? Like, is there true love? Is this like a you know a short film about love? You know, is the love from him? To, is that real love? 
is the love mentioned in the short film about in the title is it not real love it's like some type of you know in immature love is you know like uh is any, is anyone ever really in love or do they just think they are and and you know what i mean like um is is he in love with her or is he in love with some like this this the the, the dynamic yeah is she in, i don't yeah. think she because i don't think she falls uh, in love with him i think she like uh something else happens inside her yeah she loves being watched and she liked that idea and what he represented as somebody who desired her but like she didn't actually desire him for him but instead as this entity that like desires her innocently and so and that was like through the voyeur nature of it like that's why in this version, when we see her look through his window at her apartment at the end, right? Mm. I bl- that's how it ends. We enter her fantasy, and her fantasy is to be watched. Wait, no, no, no. Huh? Explain the ending. The different, yeah. sorry, yeah, the different ending in the one hour version is... No, 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 not oh. the different ending. Oh, the original ending. Yeah. But the original ending, she goes to his apartment. Yes. But I'm saying... In and both... she puts on the binoculars Oh, and, and watches herself. Okay, and sorry. she sorry. watches I was, herself. I was confused. Right. My bad, my bad. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, she watches herself, and I think that that's telling of what her ultimate, like, fantasy was, slash her love was of it all. Um, uh, yeah, and I mean, his love is obviously not for her. It's her as, as the, like, image or something like that. Well, I'm not sure. Uh, In the original ending, she... Yeah, she watches herself, but then Tomek is there to comfort her, right? She has the fantasy of them together. Uh yeah, but it's like through the, the through the window though. I don't uh-huh. I don't think that it's or maybe I think yeah, that she's it's... looking through his eyes, like what he saw when he watched her. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah, she's in love with the someone else's fantasy of her because it makes her feel like she's worth somebody's fantasy. Mm-hmm. She enjoys being desired like that, I thought, is what I was imagining. But I think this phrase that you're saying she's in love with that I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, she desires it greatly. I mean, it's not like to say yeah, love. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's what's missing in her life and what like ultimately is driving her at the end. It's like her her purpose of the past month mm-hmm. or whatever amount of time, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What? Yeah, I would I mean, I would definitely say that you know, in that they didn't exactly love each other. Like love is obviously a pretty messy word. Um, but I think it's um in most use cases of it they they definitely didn't love each other yeah i just wonder what he what kislowski means in the title like what kind of like what it it's about love right what is said about love or something like this um cuz i sort of had the sense that well she i i think she i think you're right that she desired and enjoyed and liked this um this voyeuristic looking at her right like but i think it i think what she returns to is like a reignition of tomek's innocent conception of love right like he has this sort of child like i love you i don't want anything from you blah blah, blah. and she's got this that's all love is just sex and come you know and like i think she when she destroys that, she humiliates him and tries to crush his, his conception of a more pure, good love. And right after she does, that, I think, right, she's filled with regret. And I think comes to miss his loving gaze, right? And like when she looks through the glass and sees what he saw, which was her crying and himself comforting her, right, or wanting to be there or something like this. Or like, I think, right, like she, the conception of a, a more good, pure, honest love is rekindled in her which yeah. is what i like and dis- well in the original ending i think it it holds true but i think in the original ending uh original being the one hour version uh she turns to what i just described but his is destroyed i think like i don't think he recovers like his i don't want you anymore i think just sounds to me like i don't love you anymore mm-hmm. or something like mm-hmm. this and uh which is a much more sad ending. I mean, so I, I understand just the, in terms of just literally the the hour version was recorded first and the actress was so upset by how depressing the ending was uh, that she wanted to add for the film version. She wanted a more ambiguously, possibly positive ending. And so that's how that happened. Now, I don't, that makes it sound like it's her ending instead of Koslowski's. 
which mm-hmm. I don't agree with. And I'm sure there are other forces other than her. That's just what Wikipedia has to offer. But, I mean, I think it holds true. I mean, in, in the one hour ending, Tomex is destroyed. And then the second, it's a little ambiguous as to, like, their possible future. Mm-hmm. Kieslowski also loves alternate endings. Made a whole film That's on That's pretty that. funny. He went? Blind Chance. It's like all uh, about alternate endings. I haven't seen that. I it's re- I was reading about this film and it's brought up and that Chance plays a big role. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know about that. It's pretty good. I'll have to check it out. I think uh <clears throat> I think uh my reading that I offered is compatible with what you said, Troy, about the uh ambiguously good potential um of the uh one and a half hour version the one we watched mm-hmm. uh uh but i think i think it is ambiguous i think the way it's compatible like i was saying it's it's her taking on like the fantasy his naive fantasy right mm-hmm. uh right yeah so and that's essentially what you're saying and you're saying that that is actually like a like a a seed for growth in that maybe she'll like adopt his naive conception of love or something like that um i i but i i'd say that when i watched it i didn't feel like uplifted at all i actually thought that it was tragic um because i thought that it was like she was never going to maybe it's because i was uh localizing the fantasy to him too much and like the like him being there with her which i figured you know would never happen or something like that Mm mm-hmm and that now she was trapped in this like desire of something that's never going to be um and also he's obviously been wrecked so i actually saw this ending as extremely tragic um but uh i can see why it would be ambiguously like it could be opt i can see why it would be read as optimistic as well yeah i think the compatibility of our views is 100% right like my main thesis with all my spiel was just that There may not be any like, you know, whatever capital L love on display, but like in terms of a short film about love, like I feel like the love is or um, it's about characters with different conceptions of love and and interacting and like looking at the merit of those conceptions and things like this. But and yeah, I think both endings extremely tragic. I think the film, the film version is slightly less tragic in that Tomek his future is left ambiguous and their future is left ambiguous. Whereas in the TV version, it's relatively clear they have no future together. And Tomek is additionally, or his conception of love is like uh, shit on. Mm-hmm. Um, but that totally. Could be, yeah. That could be a moment of growth for him. I mean, yeah, obviously, cause he it, might it be seems, yeah, it, may, it might be, t- it, but it could also just be the most tragic case for her, for Magda. Like, because now she's like, you know, been enveloped in this, in this conception that is fundamentally naive, but now she's got this naive conception at 30 and it's kind of been shattered for her. Whereas he has the time to grow and like create a more, uh, like synthesized view of what love can be. And so, you know, because it, it may be a good thing that, you know, in the, um, in the one hour version that his, you know, that he doesn't love her anymore because there's a sign for growth, whereas she's found herself now trapped in him. Uh, and she's older and may not have the time to, grow past it what mm. i don't know how much her affection is like localized to him and i also i see what you're saying like there's a definitely like a risk of like if you're just going to totally flip to his side but i saw her development more as a synthesis and also just worth noting like there's obviously th- this whole mature and naive and innocent and experienced like dichotomies at play and uh like it, it's not a stretch at all to see like him as adopting like his quote unquote naive conception is actually more mature and her, uh, you know, sexual frivolity and things like this is actually like a naive conception of love. Like this, like love is nothing but, you know, sex, uh, like stuff yeah, like this, yeah. like, like just like the they're both that... unwhole. Yeah. 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 yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe one is not necessarily more naive, but rather they're both yeah. unwhole. Yeah. And uh, then, I, and then I, I but I, I want to say it, my point wasn't that it's localized to him, like that she's not. She's not sad because she'll never have him. That wasn't my point. It's more she's now found herself in this. Um, she's been disillusioned with this thing that she was just coming to love 
mm. like this 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 other flip flop side, and so now now she has like nothing. She doesn't have this uh you know tender love from him, and she also has been recently like you know disenfranchised from all uh, like from all yeah, these yeah. other relationships. So I don't know. Like the uh like the the ultimate desire of some Reddit atheist trying to like take the faith away from some 70 year old man like <laughs> like, yeah. like you want to leave him with just totally like yeah imagine being disillusioned yeah, yeah. at 70 <laughs> imagine absolutely imagine never happened to me i don't have to imagine <laughs> typical disillusionment enjoyer yeah <laughs> anyway but uh i'll transition to something that i did really like about the film now um, which is Tomek's obsessiveness and his orderliness. And I think that played really well into his obsessiveness with the woman. You know, you could see like the way that he methodically makes his tea and his mm-hmm. that, that little red um, piece of fabric that he keeps over the uh, telescope mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, the cleanliness of his desk and even like his obsession with like languages and like learning things and remembering things. I think all of that plays really well into his character and then secondarily, um, the what you see about the uh, woman, what's her name? Magda. Uh, Magda. Magda. Mag- Magda. Magda. Uh, you know, like she's an artist, so that's like a really good, um, mm. like piece of her character yeah. that plays into it all. But also like that uh, I don't. I've seen it before, but that little thing that yeah, on that wood thing on the string. It's like a superstitious, like spirit thing. Yeah, and I think that plays really well into, like, why she's the kind of person to be desiring to be watched and to, like, then to play into even his fantasy. Um, So I think, like, those little pieces of information that we're getting from each of them then work well into what inevitably unfolds. Um, So that is something that I liked about the film. Yeah, just like Stephen's point of, like they're very complimentary and yeah you know maybe going towards yeah uh, and it, and it was and i'm just saying it's like very like it wasn't explicitly like told in the film it wasn't mm-hmm. overt you know it was it was small but significant and i think that's good form um for filmmaking i found the um, first section his his life in his home i found so relatable to periods of my life where I'm like living uh, like on someone's couch or living in like, you know, in a friend's little room where I'm afraid to go outside, you know, I found that so relatable, especially when he like goes into Phyllis cup and he's watching for the door, hoping the older woman doesn't uh, come interact with him. With them. Yeah. Like yeah. everything. But like, yeah, when you live in such a small room and instead of watching her, you watch the screen. Right. But uh, like every little thing you, you like dissect and, and do in a very like routine fashion and, yeah, to your point, I thought it was super good, but also I found it so relatable. Yeah. Steven? It's funny, it's funny that they he eats the same time she takes a bite of food. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I wonder if we're to assume that that's basically how he always tries to line up his night, which is kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, that, that was, yeah thing. that's how I imagine yeah. it. Um, Speaking of his home life, oral zone. You, you. Uh... <laughs> just kidding. Just... Speaking of his home life, maybe worth noting this uh, this event where, which I also found extremely relatable, uh, where the older woman is like, "Domek, Domek," you know, like Miss Poland is on TV, mm-hmm. right? Like, I mean, obviously the dynamic between right, and he looks at her like, "Ugh, all right, I'll like pander to you for a little moment here." Mm-hmm. and that's sort of relatable right it's like oh you know mm-hmm. you know you know parents are into whatever and it's like uh but it obviously it mirrors what he's doing with uh magda uh mm-hmm. but with notable difference yeah um but i found that interesting yeah, as well no, but just no, the moment no screen woman only window woman yeah time, the, no more screen woman yeah time to get wandering. real time time to get real time for window woman now time for real love but I thought the dynamic between him and the older woman was like super right, father or uh, mother son, and like uh, felt just right in yeah. terms of like the ages and their interests and things like this. Yeah, or in particular like single mother. Yeah. Uh, 
or at least yeah lonely father's lonely out there mother now. yeah lonely mother yeah yeah she i felt bad for her in the beginning especially when she's like you know she's so old and she just wants to hang out with Dominic. like <sighs> i felt really bad for her at the end because you know obviously she wants a relationship for her son and you know this is the this is this is what he's been up to um her son's friend oh sorry right yeah, her yeah. son's friend um I don't know. I feel yeah. Like towards the end, I become not confused, but I find her behavior a little more cryptic in terms of like uh, Kislowski communicating to me. Mm -hmm. And um, I almost don't like her at the end. Like, I thought she was great. And then when she has the moment where, where Tomek asks her, why do people cry? You know, I thought she gave a pretty base response. And I'm liking her as the wise old lady who's like, uh, or unseemingly wise old lady mm -hmm. but then towards the end i felt like she was getting in the way of like i want i wanted to see magda interact with tomek mm -hmm. yeah not to say that like uh old lady was wrong for what she did but i found it a little more like i'm not exactly sure um what is happening there like i get what she's doing from her perspective but I'm not sure what I should be, you know, like, is it right? Is it wrong? You know, I, I don't. Okay. Does yeah, that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, no, that makes sense. She, she admits to uh, how she doesn't want to be alone. And then I, I noticed it right after that. That's when uh, the more, what well, you said, cryptic behavior started. Yeah. I thought it was silly that Magda didn't stay, although she's not a little girl anymore. But yeah, when she was like, like, a Magda's trying to, like, get in and, like, get with, not get with Tomek, but, like, I don't know, uh, infiltrate the situation. The old lady's like, look, I, I'm an old lady, I don't ask for much, but I'm afraid alone. And Magda's yeah. like, okay, bye, <laughs> you know? That yeah, made me a little sad. If you're, if you're to take, like, a, um, like, a devouring mother perspective, even though she's not the mother, and I don't even think this really maps on completely, because she obviously wants Tomek to actually get a real relationship um but if you were to take a more devouring mother perspective mm -hmm. like her seeing what was happening with tomek through the window mm -hmm. through his own telescope and you know maybe she would want this to like come to an end or something because when she invites uh her into the house you know and it's i imagine in her mind this is like this big reveal about ooh, look what tomek has been doing to you like this all this time and obviously she already knows that mm -hmm. um but i uh, from my perspective that was like her way to try and like put an end to this thing and yeah i guess that would be it that would map on to like the mm -hmm. devouring mother thing yeah i did not feel good when she's when she's watching him yeah like, i didn't want her to watch i, I did like, not oh. like that yeah that was terrible Although there's some good things. It's like a totally different eye, you know? Yeah. Like it's one of, I don't know. I think at first you suspect that she won't get it, you know? Like like she's too old, she's out of touch or something like this. Mm -hmm. But it seems like she gets it. You know, she even seems open to like it being a positive thing, you know? And she asks uh, Magda, you know, you know, it's silly. He fell in love with you. You know, was it a bad choice? You know, and Magda says yes. Yeah. Which is kind of nice. That's one point for Magda. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I like agree. her character. I think she's a good character. Yeah, the first time I watched it, I didn't spend enough time thinking about her. But I now think I see I... her as super pitiful and sufficiently complex. Yeah, definitely sufficiently complex. But also, like um sort of a perpetrator in her own demise as yeah. what i'm sort of getting at here or what i was like picking up on is like even in this scenario where she has like absolute control you know she can't be taken advantage of there is this potential of like purity and love and then she just absolutely blows it once again with like sort of um sexual advances getting in the way and then she obviously had a problem with you know her life being filled with like empty sex but 
perhaps perhaps she's also the problem in mm -hmm. some way. Well, she says she's not a good person. Yeah. <gasps> Dude, that scene when he's in her apartment is so crazy, especially when it, especially when it's gone sexual. Yeah. Poor Tomek. I thought she was pretty attractive, although she's like clearly more aged. She's not like old mm -hmm. or anything, but you know she has like the the furrows and stuff like this. Yeah, I mean she was perfect for. I think she's perfect for her role. Yeah, in that she was a pretty attractive older woman. N a e l. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, that was so sad. I was thinking. I was kind of wondering what the uh, what that could have been translated from. Like what the, do you think it was four words? Morse code. Morse code. I'm going to refill my coffee. Uh -oh. Okay. That reminds me though, like, I was so surprised how honest he is the whole time. Yeah. Like even dulls are that. I, I thought maybe that would be the one thing he keeps secret. Yeah. Yeah, like he felt like he had to when when she said, "What does that mean?" Right? He's like dreading telling her, but he has to or something. But he's so pretty, honest. Pretty bad to keep her mail. That's pretty yeah. That bad. that the one that things, was the worst the thing things, he did. Yeah, the other things were all like relatively playful and innocent. Mm -hmm. Even the gas leak was not nearly as dangerous. You know, it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. It's it's just like shenanigans. You know. Yeah. But but. My God, keeping someone's mail is really, really, yeah. really bad. Yeah, but he and knows that. I think. Yeah, yeah, she gets, yeah, I think so too. Oh, I don't. I. I think he knows it's not. I, yeah, he knows a it's bad thing to do. Yeah, he knows it's bad, <laughs> but he doesn't seem to like realize it, maybe or something. Yeah. He also like she right. She's been. Oh, I love her actually. Like her her performance at least, and like the character. Like when when they're at that scene in the cafe, right? And she's like trying to play it cool, you know. And keep this kind of adult conception of just how wrong, like just the way, you know, an adult can see the situation as opposed to a child. And when the male thing comes up, right, she has this outburst where it cracks. She's so angry, right? Like this is so bad. But he just sits there like, I mean, he kind of gets how bad it is, but he doesn't, you know, she just, uh, it's, it, 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 yeah, I think she, uh, like, she is more a victim of chance than of a perpetrator is i think the way it is and the way she comes to conceive of it and right all the stuff i was saying earlier i think can be summed up by that like all the stuff about him being docile controllable etc non-threat reframes it as predator and prey to like victim of chance right like he, he he keeps her mail she gets so mad and it's like what is she mad at him like he's just an idiot or something right <laughs> like she just happened to be Right, he doesn't want mm -hmm. anything from her. She doesn't, she, doesn't, she doesn't have anything he wants. Right? He's just a fool who's in love with her. You know, type of thing. Ugh. Would it be better if Tomek was homeless? <laughs> <laughs> Would it be better if so. he had like a huge beard and was like panhandling every day but watching her? Garbled language. <laughs> I've been watching you. <laughs> <laughs> reeks of booze and whiskey. Yeah, yeah. And she walks over and she just pukes because like, he smells super, so bad. super unkempt. He's like a long beard. Yeah. yeah. Um, R slash movie details. Um, red phone, red uh, cloth over the telescope. Red six. 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 Red, red, uh, that red like door thing. What even was that? when like outside of her apartment door i don't even know what it was yeah there's go there was, they, were, they were talking right in front of it when she was like Do you, yeah like, it was oh, just like stained me? glass or something mm -hmm. or something yeah. i don't know yeah there's I think, I think there was one, one one more like big red obvious thing i don't remember what it was anymore yeah something oh. about sex there's something about this film <laughs> that makes me think of sex yeah man what if tomek jumped off the roof when he goes up to the roof yeah at that one time i actually really love that that's more believable 
Now I can. Nah. Now you. <laughs> slit your wrist. Oh yeah, uh -uh. slits his wrist. He slits his wrist. Oh really? Red. You don't have the guts. Red. Red. Yeah. Sex Red. In his, <laughs> sex in his Red veins. Sex blood. Sex Actually, blood. that might be. I hadn't thought about that, but that's probably a real thing. Um, yeah, Kislevsky's on that. Kislevsky's on, on that top of it. He's on that red. Look at the red <laughs> bus. We're looking at a red bus right now. Oh, they're, they're on the sex bus, the bus, right? If they get on the bus. Sex. Yeah. The sex bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, what's it called? Something, Look at these flowers, something, too. Something There's red taxi, flowers. Secret taxi, or what is it? There's some, like, famous I know what you're talking thing. about. But taxi. What's it I called? Know, I don't know Cab. what it's called. It's like a cash cab. No, it's like cash cab, but porn. <laughs> oh, I forget oh. what it's called. You know what I'm talking about? Oh. Secret taxi or something. I mean, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know this is the bus version. Something like that. Um. Oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, the bus. Uh, ultimately, though, this movie's empty. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Unless you actually want to follow that and not no. as a joke. Okay. I just wanted to know when he's on the roof and crushes the ice against his head. Oh, that was there good. is something really good about that. Just visually, like I feel like I could smell and feel that scene. Like it felt so good, and what he, honestly, incredible performance from him. Uh, I also imagined him being such a absolute reject that he like like social reject, and like so stupid, so incredibly dumb and stupid, like an idiot, like really <laughs> stupid, and he. Uh, that he has to take this, I, like he's getting all flushed in the cheeks. That he's like, I'm getting, I'm overheating. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna overheat and die. And so he takes, he takes the ice and presses it to his cheeks. He's like, I don't want to die. I'm too hot. No, no, he's not an idiot. He's not that no, dumb. I, I was gonna say on a more serious note that it was like that. I feel like it was, it was a really like perfect way to like have that scene that sort of um uh like self-harm like you are in such like emotional like turmoil that you just need to like i don't know like hurt yourself with like this ice it's just i don't know it's really uh yeah that was something really, the, really perfect that was something it. the the uh mother the guardian said to him mm -hmm. about the iron pressing the how how, how her yes, son pre would yes. press the iron that was so dumb to say that was so stupid. It was all based, and that's obviously still like from a literary perspective pretty based. But as far as advice goes, dude, why would you tell someone that that's how somebody copes with emotional distress? What was the yeah. advice again? She 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 said that her son would pre would heat up an iron and press it against. His oh shoulder. yeah, no, she was like um, yeah, it was dumb but right it was an answer to the question I, yeah, 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 yeah yeah i know yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i like it, it wasn't went, advice it wasn't yeah, advice yeah, 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 but yeah. it's it's clearly something you don't want to tell someone who seems so like socially and yeah, like that like the pain cannot naive. go away yeah the pain will remain yeah i mean um, it, it's it, it's like correct but it's just such a that's what i tell my kid i don't know he's gonna like yeah. scrape his knee and be like how long is this gonna last i'm gonna say forever <laughs> you will always be in pain <laughs> But then I'll show then him, you'll punch him, and then you'll punch him, and then you crush, crush ice in your ears, yeah. and you tell him that, <laughs> and he'll ah, yeah. scream. Yeah. Yeah. I'll hit him with a Chill block out, of ice, little man. I'll hit him with a block of ice, but oh. <laughs> and you put him in cryostasis for a million years, wake up, <laughs> deep sleep. <laughs> Did it go away? Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna go to sleep for a long time, kid. <laughs> Sweet dreams, motherfucker. <laughs> Put him away. Take him away. Take him away. <laughs> All right. What's this film about? Sex. Sex and oh, man honey, fantasy. Honey, you're watching a film love. tonight? Yeah. What film? Short film about love. What's it about? <laughs> oh, I mean, it's about like uh, voyeurism and like love. Um. And uh, sex, yeah, secrecy on Magnifi. The uh, I think we already said what the movie's about. Yeah, I already feel like I know, I'm, just, I'm just kidding, I'm just trying to get us to talk more. It's a pretty short, pretty short film. It's a short film, Bella. <laughs> it's a short one, damn. That one, it is, yeah, it is comparatively short. It's only an hour and a half. 
which I think is like more standard film length though. Yeah, that's true. But I feel like um, what a rush! It was. It was. Uh, it wasn't like jam packed with like information. It was a lot more like visceral experience because yeah. like despite my uh parts where I was um like not super in it intellectually, my heart in the uh in the um in the apartment scene oh, no. i was i was i was there i was viscerally there that's what counts bro there's only the heart i may have to out you now you've called i just recalled the absolute yeah go ahead and i mean look it'll i'm i'm public enemy number one this episode go ahead and out me i still love you bro brody stopped the movie halfway through when I added, I added people, and I was like, "Hey, anybody want to play games right now?" And Brody's the only one to join. You know, halfway uh-huh. through the movie, he pauses it, uh-huh. and then I and then I say something like, "He tells <laughs> he tell, I'm like, I take it, you haven't watched the movie yet." He's like, "No, I was just in the middle of it." I'm like, "Bro, <laughs> go no! back to the movie." <laughs> oh my god! Would you league? It was going to be, but we didn't end up playing. I uh, I it banished was... him. Yeah, I got banished. Um, that is rough. It was it was um, before they had met. It was before they had. Uh, oh, okay, so uh, nothing important was happening. I'm d- look. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just clarifying. <laughs> All right, I got you. That it was. It was a right before the movie started to really start to pick up. Now you posted in our chat the eyes emoji. Yeah, because this because this film made me extremely uncomfortable, um, mm. in a uh, uh, more of a sexual way, mm. which I hesitate to say in Listen, a public forum. I was bricked but, up, but I was. Uh, <laughs> What's well, bricked up? Does that mean you were like rock solid? <laughs> yeah, <what's that? laughs> you ever, you ever <laughs> heard the phrase bricked up? <laughs> now, does that mean rock solid though? Yeah, it means what it sounds like. Wait, what, what I'm was? just kidding, but <laughs> I think that is such a funny phrase. Yeah, that's pretty um, good. I watched I've watched this with a girl before and she found it extremely erotically uncomfortable. Just throwing it out there. Really? I find well, I I I find it super erotic. Not just like, oh, obviously the mood is erotic, like I've, you know, I found it to be erotic in my heart, and like uh, I mean, it was the, the, the whole thing. It was, it, it, no, it was that's the whole a sin. thing, huh? It was the whole. It was the whole thing, really. Yeah, the, it was whole, the whole thing, right up until right up until um right until the end, right until he um starts freaking out and cutting himself and stuff. Freaking out. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, you know, up until then, it just becomes so tragic and so sad. But right up until then, like it was. Uh, yeah, it was extremely sexual. Yeah, it was it's just so good. I can't think. I don't know of any other films that do. Maybe I'm totally not thinking straight, but like voyeurism, quite so well. Yeah, like I obviously it's like central. I don't know. We we haven't really talked about it much, but um, so good. Uh, yeah, I mean, it makes me think like, cause you know when she asks like, oh, like is it, what do you want? Is it sex? I was uh, questioning his honesty there, um, because I I could imagine a scenario where, like, he kind of is deluding himself a little bit into thinking that what he his love is is more pure than it actually is, um, especially since that he has already like seen her have sex and things like that. Now, obviously, he's stopped, but. It still leads me to believe, and it's hard for me to believe that there isn't this extreme sexual and erotic nature to what he's doing, and what he does want is something sexual, and isn't there is no purity in this love that he might be believing that he has. Yeah, insofar as he might be deluded, I still believe that he thinks that, and like... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. For which sure. is what you're saying, um, but I think the tone of the film, like the no. the erotic tone, matches up with his journey, like of in the beginning when you're watching, 
right? As someone who doesn't know this character really at all, it's very erotic and very uncomfortable, the early voyeurism. Mm -hmm. uh, but once we come to know him, I think it definitely takes on a different tone, right? Especially when he stops them from having sex, right? And maybe this is like possessive, right? But, mm -hmm. right, like, oh, she's my girl, right? I'm going to get in the way of someone else trying to do whatever. Okay, yeah, but that, also, I mean, that's how I imagined it at the be very beginning mm -hmm. when I first saw it. Yeah, in the beginning, that's like, that's what you're thinking, and it's, like, really erotically uncomfortable, and there's this, like, uh, perverted stalking voyeurism. Uh, but I think it transitions as, like, you get to know him, and I generally don't doubt his honesty. Well, well the same thing, right? I, I think he's being honest insofar as he's able to be. Well, I think he's being honest in what it is that he thinks is going yeah, on. Exactly, but I think yeah. there is there is absolutely this like underlying um, sexual motive, or or at least I have a hard time believing that there wouldn't be in this scenario. I was feeling like the the sexual motive, like in the beginning, feels like a sexual motive. The tone, but transitions to. Right, something more like what he's talking about, and insofar mm -hmm. as like the erotic or sexual content uh, goes, like it's almost like investigative or something like this. Like as he is someone who <coughs> has no sexual experience. Sorry, uh, <coughs> I just didn't choking on your coffee. <coughs> um, oh my god, coffee choke. Anyway, yeah. like I feel like his sexual journey matches that of the tone of the film. It starts off erotic and uncomfortable then transitions to something a little more, you know, if you'll allow, like, transcendently good love, but also, like, maybe sexual content, but not mm -hmm. necessarily, like, erotic interest. Like, almost like someone who doesn't know anything about sex, like, studying it. Like, like 40-year-old virgin type content. Yeah. And then I, I she takes of... control and brings it into this, like, very uncomfortable, like, erotic control where she sort of forces him into this erotic situation that he's been clear in the past. He's not exactly like, that's not his motive. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. Yeah. My mind was called back to the piano teacher, uh, several times mm. throughout this film in the sense that there is like this observance of sex without this capability of like even really acting it. Um, and that this desire is, or the nature of this desire is necessarily something that needs to be obstructed and not fully fulfilled in order for it to be maintained. And then obviously you could say that that's how all desire is and whatever, but mm -hmm. in this case, this is at least an exploration of that, if anything. Yeah, I think the similarity is there for sure. Additionally, like the similarity of coming, to con coming into contact with the fantasy and it it's crushing and yeah like um i mean he alleges that it's no longer his fantasy but right but there's some kind of fantasy of like you know the nerdy whatever watching the hot popular uh sexually promiscuous girl right and maybe they mm -hmm. fantasize like oh you know maybe you know she's so uh uh promiscuous Right. If I could just get in there, you know, she'll have sex with me, too. You know, like this is something you see in films in real life, whatever. And this is almost like. That happens, right? Like like the nerd comes into contact with the promiscuous girl and she's aware of what his like conception of the situation is. And for mm -hmm. some reason chooses to play into the character. Right. Like maybe as an attempt to like say, well, this is not just right. Like, like some, yeah, some, like, there's something interesting there happening where. The girl plays into the character, but then it's ultimately crushing. It's different in yeah. this film, right? And, From and, this and, trope, and then, but there's something you know, like that. Yeah, but then, like, you know, and I would say, like, in coming to contact with a desire like that, with something that's been coveted for over a year, like, it almost has no other choice than to be crushing. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it has to be. Um, well, Andy's having yeah. the, his, his, his past. If we can just. You know, if I, I'm going to operate on the frame that, that he truly, he doesn't fantasize about, like his erotic fantasies have surpassed and now he is more interested in, in a more uh, good or transcendent conception of love. Like he, he comes into contact with her, right? He's so excited about this date, right? Like mm -hmm. he's finally maybe going to get to know her, the woman he loves and all this stuff. 
and all she does is engage with the with a fantasy of his past right mm-hmm. like she brings him down to his prior more base conceptions of love or something i don't know maybe i mean like you know the way that i read the scene was like it was the date was built off the back of this very strange encounter that they had where he reveals you know that she's he's been watching her so they talk about that a little bit because like you know how couldn't you but she then tries to transition more into a normal conversation and that's where you know talks about the languages and things like that but you know he's pretty pretty inept in that um in that department uh yeah Mm. Man, she's so hot and wet. Yeah. Comes out of the shower. Yeah, dude, when she says that is an insane moment. I mean, obviously, I was referring to she comes out of the shower, she's all wet. But when she says to him, like, you know, when a woman desires a man, she becomes wet inside, and that's how I am now. Mm -hmm. Holy smokes. That is insane. And, uh... I didn't know if I, I didn't know when I watched it both times, I felt like, I don't know if I believe her, you know, like, cause the whole time I feel like she is playing the character of his, she is playing the character that she thinks he fantasizes about. You know what I mean? Like she thinks she doesn't, she doesn't believe him that he doesn't want anything from her. She thinks that this is erotic and this is this thing and all right, I'll give the boy what he wants. Right. Or something mm-hmm. like this. And obviously that is part of her like fan- desire. Right? Yeah. Yeah. To be this character. Uh-huh. So she's playing the character she thinks is that of his fantasies. When it's not, right? And I just don't know if I believe her when she says, when she indicates that she is sexually aroused and interested in him. Um, and poor Tomek just busts. But yeah. it is so intense. His hands are so shaky. And, oh my goodness. You can't blame him. No, you can't. And uh, and what does she say already? Oh, just humiliating. Yeah. Oh, then she and then she calls back to uh, like, is this all like, how much your love can last or something like yeah, that? Yeah, that's that's all love is. Referring yeah, to is this, yeah. And then you know he just he dips. Yeah, and terrible. not only is but yeah yeah she like makes him feel terrible right? He's already huh you know blah blah. blah. There's a rag in the thing. Yeah. Or whatever. And then right in this terrible state where he's just like bodily, you know, humiliated, she says, that right there, that's love. Yeah. Or something like this, you know, because like this is, I feel like she's trying to write like this like projection, right? Trying yeah, to argue she's, like, she's, for the yeah, validity of her life. Yeah, that's exactly it. She's trying to crush the fantasy to become, you know, more more closer to how she sees it. You know, like, yeah. like you said, like the atheist, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. Except he can still recover, I guess. He's young enough. He could uh he could get out of the uh, nihilist zone. Tomek's not coming back. No, he's, he's not, not coming, coming back. back. It's, uh, it's just that's why you should just live in fantasy all the time. Just maintain it. Steven, what do we got here? What? What are you talking about? No, what are you doing? I'm listening to you guys. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Steven is... <laughs> gaslighting us he's showing us like paper clips on the camera <laughs> gaslighting what's that uh, it's this thing I, I read this i read this thing on reddit about it <sighs> magda 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 uh, yes yeah, so now what one of you said something i disagree with Okay. Uh, okay. I, I love think, I love disagreements. I think it was uh Oh, Troy. Hmm. I think she I think she we can take her word that she is wet. Really? Um, <laughs> and I think it's for the reason that you say she's doing. Like she is aroused because of uh like she's getting extreme sexual enjoyment from playing into her conception of what his fantasy is. Like I think I think that serves to provide the reason for why she would be aroused given such an odd situation, like with like such an yeah. un, like incapable person and all that, you know? Yeah. Like so I, I actually take her word for it, you know. 
yeah, but what you said too. is my and she has, yeah this is like her first case of like sexual control as well yeah 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 well maybe i mean I, yeah that's what we're led to believe i guess is that this is her first case of sexual or some, control or some kind of greater sense of control like total control like whereas she is no longer the object of use he is yeah she she could be a pedophile <laughs> like in the prior prior story you know maybe she yeah we need a prelog prelog we need an epilogue and a prologue here how about the fact that he's he orders wine checkmate this movie is unrealistic Huh. They have to be. They have to be twenty one. Yeah. No. Everyone. Everyone. Everyone, everyone has to be twenty one. Everyone. Wine. Everywhere. <laughs> everyone. Obviously. All right. Check time me, to bring up atheists. ice cream. Yeah. Milk. And wine. Red wine. She wants red wine. Oh, she red. wants sex liquid. R slash yeah. movie details. <laughs> she orders wine. She she spills the milk and yeah. she's crying. Yeah, and, and I'm a little tired of that, to be honest. I'm a little so, tired of seeing uh, milk. It was dude, in this, I mean, it was and it was also time. in. Uh, although this one made milk a whole thing, so it's different. Yeah. But but uh, this what was Declan or this this film? This film. Um, but there's a previous uh, movie we saw where they're yeah, crying over was, spilled well, milk. Yeah, it, it was, was um, they dropped the it milk. It was recent. Right? Yeah, it was recent. What oh, was it? Uh, Passion of Anna. Yeah, yeah Passion of Anna, he drops yeah. the milk. So hold on, it happens okay. twice, and you're over it. You're tired of it. I think yeah. this is self-aware. Yeah, basically maybe not. Twice. But Decalogue, it's worth noting. Uh, milk features and milk features somewhat heavily in every Decalogue film. That's cool. Also, I don't know what it is with milk. Like obviously, it's like the sign of purity and innocence, and and. You know the mother's yeah. milk, but oh yeah, that dude drank milk. Someone ordered milk in a movie a while ago. We watched, I forget what, but someone yeah. chooses to drink milk. There's always milk. Else. Milk is so is big video in drum? film, it's crazy. No, not video drum. Um, no, milk is obviously this like crazy popular image. It's in sacrifice. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Kislowski was criticized uh, for his use of milk in this film saying it was way too on the nose <laughs> and he he said that what are you talking about he says there's way on the nose there's way too much more than you could ever know about this no, symbolism he, uh, the opposite he says what are you talking about it's just milk it's not okay. some symbol it's not whatever it's just milk but i feel like it's yeah, obviously right. tongue, obviously it's tongue-in-cheek right <laughs> yeah right. uh so i, yeah, I don't funny. know that's a good way to respond yeah i i don't know what it is because it is it it well, it's I, cool because milk, it's milk really was like a lifestyle thing too. The, the delivered milk really was like a yeah. lifestyle thing, unironically. So it's like that is mm -hmm. kind of cool. So he, he gets a pass more so than other other people do. If I made a movie now, and I had a character the, that Mountain that's Dew. getting milk, yeah, yeah, that has to go. That goes to Seven Eleven. Yeah, if I made it today, right? <laughs> I'd probably do Mountain Dew deliveries. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they spill. Um, spill. I don't know. I want to give him the uh, the benefit of the doubt and like suspect that it's uh even bigger brain than uh i know you know because it, it does seem really on the nose i'm yeah I, I think it is but whatever it's not actually that big of a deal i, I think it's on the way. nose but it's it, it's made better because it's in all of them so that's all right like it's if milk yeah. is in every decalogue it, it takes on a new uh and that's the way like symbols can work if you have them uh, in a long form like novel or in a mm -hmm. collection of short stories you can have a symbol that now takes on like its own uh isolated uh yeah. meaning yeah and that's pretty fun so i yeah. mean it's different in the decalogue case i think yeah it definitely does fit too because decalogue is like very much right the decalogue the ten commandments um mm -hmm. right it's it's very much this attempt to like uh distill like that like the narrative history of man into a modern lower income like end of soviet era poland yeah and so trash yeah. apartments ugly so, so dismal yeah so dismal dude when he fills up the water in the, the with bath the, the bathtub yeah. dude, that, that was bumming me out and i was like man dude is the sink broken i actually liked his little kettle device you know that he took the water the with. heat yeah the heat yeah, it looks like it looks like an electric kettle 
but you put it's it very in compact and it looks very compact and nice it very it looks european it, it looks, looks like you yeah can it does up with that it looks like in a horror movie you can really <laughs> yeah, like... really yeah it actually is up, up someone's butthole i agree with that brody it looks super european i don't know what yeah. it is about it but anyway well, i kind of wish i had one it seems nice yeah well some do something about the states like i don't know what we got against like electric kettles here but like okay. i feel they, like hardly they, anybody's they... got one but in all across Europe, everybody's got an electric kettle. It is like a thing. Because they're into their tea. They need their tea. I mean, whatever. We, we like coffee. hot water in the States. We well, like hot I know, water. But... I microwave my water. But yeah, like, uh, that's fine. American, dude. Tanner, do you, well. how do you heat up your water? Because <laughs> Tanner was telling me before this, Tanner, and this is actually, I'm, this is based. Uh, well, I just wanted to frame that I'm saying this is a good thing weighs his coffee in grams like he has a scale and he weighs That's it awesome, and he's got yeah. the he's got the perfect water to coffee ratio it's so awesome but how do you heat up your water a kettle brody yeah, is blown out we we use a kettle as well and uh no i use the oh, kettle sorry. i think is uh it's only advantageous if you're going to be if like several people in the house or you know something like that are going to use it because the the because the microwave is actually faster on average but the kettle is nicer because it has a thermos built into it. Yeah. So you can heat it up and it'll stay hot for a while. You can heat a large quantity, it'll stay hot for a long time. My, so my, like my, I, use kettle, point, I use bro, kettle, but it's on the fire. Totally it's understood. fire fire kettle. And the three of us have them, so your point's not right. America clearly has a right. three kettle. of us yeah. have them? Uh, I don't have one, but I've had one in the past multiple times. Mm. I don't have one right now, it's unfortunate. I'm just nuking mm. it. My kettle tells mm. time, bro. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy. <laughs> oh, shit. You threw away your watch? Oh, Got it. <laughs> my, ke- my kettle plays Spotify. <laughs> Dude, there are some that are like Bluetooth. Yeah. It's, it's a smart television kettle. It's, you, play, you play Flappy Bird on your uh, kettle. <laughs> Two, what's that, what's that say one where the guy but bones? I forgot it now. Surfrider, Tomb Raider, Tomb, tomb, uh, tomb, 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 Temple Run, Temple Run, Temple Run, Temple Run, run. Yeah. the class. <laughs> um, oh, if oh God, I actually remember what I was gonna say, but it's just, it is, it is not about the movie. Should I say it? Well, we're yes. talking about kettles. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was that I was wondering, like, do they get a new thing of milk like every day? Yeah. Yeah. Dude. I my I get a quart of milk and it goes bad. <laughs> I can't finish that. They get milk every day. I get quart and it goes bad. <laughs> like, my, uh, what are they my, using it for, dude? They my just dad, drink it. My dad worked uh, at a dairy a long time ago when they used to do that as well. People would come in with their glass bottles and he'd hand them a new one and he'd like take theirs and have to wash it. Mm-hmm. And everybody and he like interacted with everybody. It was like a huge thing. And the milkman used to be here in the U.S. Yeah, the milkman. That's so crazy. But they would just drink it. I mean, drinking milk doesn't yeah, happen yeah. Now like it used to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because okay, now I, didn't, I, didn't know I get that milk. Was a but yeah, I only put it into stuff like as an ingredient. Yeah, yeah. You're not. That's what I thought they were doing. Milk. I thought they, I yeah. thought they were drinking just so much coffee, eating there, so much was, cereal. There was no soda. You know, there was yeah. no soda. <laughs> Imagine a world without soda. All you've got is Imagine. your choice of water, water, milk, and coffee. Can you imagine a and world tea. without soda and wa- and wine. Wine. wine and ice cream we know those things that we know at least those things exist in this world yeah in we this, can't be in so this, sure about everything Kisowski else cinematic universe <laughs> there's, there's at least one bus there's at least there's one, at bus. Least one bus. <laughs> 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 we need to start all right. diagrams all, all right, right all right. right let's give our fucking numbers let's give our numbers and uh the yeah. advertisers aren't gonna like that one. You gotta be careful. Oh, we'll, we'll cut it out. It's all right. Okay. Huh? Nothing. <laughs> Whatever. I'll listen to this joke later. Um. All right. Uh, in conclusion, I appreciate this film more than I did before the podcast, which is usually not a good sign. I feel like uh, if you like a film, the farther you get from it, it's not good. Okay. Uh. I really like this film. I agree with the earlier stated sentiments that it's not the best Decalogue or the best Kislowski. But I think it is a very good Decalogue. 
And I really like it. I am giving this film 3.5. No. Oh. 3.6. Wow. Fair enough, Troy boy. That makes I'm... it is very good. What's the cutoff for very good? 3.5? 3.5 is very good. It's not quite halfway <laughs> between very good and a must watch. <laughs> but it's, I'd say it's very good. Look, this movie is a fine movie. Thanks, Kislowski. Always a treat. But it's not your finest work. We're going to give this one, and by we, I mean me, uh, a solid, if I could just say this one thing, a solid <laughs> 3.0. Wow. Wait, what's his finest in your opinion? So far, I like uh, three colors the most. Blue. I've only seen blue. Okay. I like that more than his decalogues. Although the other decalogue was pretty nice. The mm -hmm. number four, four, I think. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was pretty pretty darn good. Tanner, is decalogue one the one with the father-son? Yeah. That one is so good. Literal. Uh, I'm not going to say it, but... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like this it seems a little more than you two uh but i do agree it's it's not my favorite kislowski uh but i'm still gonna give it a decently a decent score i'm gonna say 3.8 okay wow it would that's appear a, that's that's a now, we're, now we're cooking it would appear that steven has read my mind um i'm giving this also a solid 3.0 um, with its uh, negatives being that it is Avengers tier and of levels of suspension of disbelief. I'm kidding about that slightly, um, but also kind of not. And then, but it is <laughs> saved by it is its uh, visceral enjoyment um, for, for a lot of it. Uh, you know, I don't think it was just a nice, it's a nice movie. Yeah, we've got another well-crafted, straightforward narrative film. Yeah, I, I, nice I'm, I, has, I, I, I has, I wanted, what I wanted to say was that there isn't like a whole lot here, but I mean, that's really arrogant for me to say. And obviously there's a lot that I'm not understanding, just like any other piece of, um, piece of, uh, good artwork, so. This is something you could show your teenage son. Uh, I wouldn't show this to my teenage son. No. I didn't say I would. would, I, would let, I, I would. I would. I would let him find it and watch it. On I'd obviously own show and... him like piano teacher and sacrifice, and we probably. Wait, there's a big okay. You could show I'd, him this though. I'd show. I'd I'm show just saying it's straightforward, nice narrative. Yeah, it's like a good follow. Like this is like, oh, dad wants to watch. Dad wants me to watch this old movie, you know, uh -huh. and it's like a straightforward narrative, whatever. Yeah. My dad likes Indiana Jones. Really? Mine too. Yeah, he loves his like favorite movie is, uh, what's the first one with the rolling rock? Uh, in, uh Isn't that Raiders? No, the the Crusader. Song. The Last Crusade? Or? I don't know. Not Raiders of the Lost Ark, right? That's second. No, no. No, it's Raiders of the Lost Ark. Is yeah, it? Oh, I thought sure that Raiders might be number two. Ark. I'm not sure. Yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark. All right, whatever. That's the first one. Look, my dad, <laughs> I, I I would guess likes the first Indiana Jones, but I would guess would not like the others. I don't know that for sure. Mm -hmm. And would my dad like this movie? No. God, no. <laughs> absolutely not. He wouldn't like this? Well, he wouldn't like would hate like it, but he wouldn't enjoy it, no. He'd uh, be my very dad would bored like both. and like, think it's weird. My dad likes Blue Velvet. Huh? Okay, okay. That's yeah. pretty cool. I don't think my dad would like that either. What about your son? <laughs> my son would for sure, yeah. Alright. Is that it? I guess that's it. What about um, Tanner's dad? Tanner, would your dad like this? Um, to be honest, I'm not sure. His favorite movie is uh, not Indiana Jones, but Truman Show. <laughs> True okay, show. that's pretty heady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your dad reminds me of Truman. <laughs> Maybe Jim Carrey in general. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, Jim Carrey's cool. 
don't know. All right. I guess bye-bye. Bye. 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 bye.